Hey everyone, Stephen here, Autistic YouTuber, and welcome to Toastamac. In recent years, we have seen more and more diagnoses for autism. Some through an official diagnosis, but others have been through people diagnosing themselves. But come on, a self-diagnosis? Surely there can't be anything viable about that. Or is there? Before we get too deep into this, I do want to reiterate one thing. As a content creator, my role is to give advice and information the best way I can. But it is not my place to tell you how to live your life. With this in mind, I will be going over the ups and downs of both ends of the conversation, share some of my personal experience whenever applicable, and then after that, I want to leave it up to you to decide what you think is best. We'll start with the ups and downs of an official diagnosis. Right off the bat, the biggest benefit is that you will gain a better understanding of yourself and why things about you are the way they are. Your strengths, your weaknesses. For many people that are struggling with their life, not knowing the reasons why, getting these answers can give them a sense of conclusion as well as a starting place in which to build themselves up. Take it from me, a little understanding can go a long way. Going to the next up, getting an official diagnosis requires going through a system that has been refined for decades and has proven to work. This method usually involves things like an observation tool to assess social interactions and communications, a diagnostic interview designed to distinguish autism from other developmental disabilities, and a rating scale used to observe characteristics and traits that could be linked to autism. Going through the process will narrow down what the answer is and rule out what it isn't, so you will more often than not get to the right answer. When you do get an official diagnosis, you should have multiple resources available to you to help you on your journey. Things like an individualized education program if the individual is still in school. There are also financial resources as well as resources to help you with job hunting. Or if you are currently in a job, you can use the official diagnosis to ask for possible accommodations to make the workplace easier for you. With all of these benefits, it's hard to go wrong with an official diagnosis. Not so fast. These are some good ups to be sure, but we cannot overlook the downs. There are quite a few hardships in terms of getting an official diagnosis. The biggest one possibly? Money, 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 money. If we don't get copyright struck because of that, I will be genuinely surprised. Going through the process is by no means cheap. Some prices can range from 500 to 1,000 to even more than 2,000. Not everybody is going to have that amount of money on them. It's not exactly chump change that you can just toss away on a whim. Yes, there may be some states like Maryland, Colorado, Connecticut, and Pennsylvania that could provide insurance for autistic people, which can cover most, if not all, cost of services, including diagnostic assessments. But if you are not in the right location, you might not be so fortunate. As someone who has moved not once but twice, I can tell you that's not cheap either. Money isn't going to be the only cost, though. There is also the issue of time. This requires more than just a casual visit with just any doctor. This is a process which can take various amounts of time. Ideally with medical professionals who have been trained to understand what autism is and is not. It could take hours, weeks, or even over a year. And that's assuming you don't have to look for a different medical expert because the previous one messed up. If you are going to get an official diagnosis, you need to understand that this is a commitment. That you are not guaranteed to get results right away and you have to be willing to invest whatever amount of time it could take to get to the answer. Then we get to the downside that many people dread. The wait list. 
Since so many people are going for the same services that you may be seeking, some facilities will opt for waitlist since they can't help everyone at the same time. With this, you could end up waiting a very long time to even be seen in the first place. Steven, I do believe you have some experience on the matter. Ugh, why did you have to remind me about that? Okay, so, back when I was first looking for a full-time job in Maryland, my mom and I were trying to get access to resources from an organization that will not be mentioned. They showed us what they could provide us, and then mentioned that we had to be on a wait list before they could assist us any further. Okay, fine. That wait ended up being more than two years. Two flipping years! And then, when we got the letter in the mail saying, Good news, you're off the wait list. I already had a full-time job and was well-situated in it. So yeah, thanks for nothing. Look, I understand that the waitlist system is there for a reason. There is only so many people that an organization can help without going over capacity. I get that. At the same time, though, our time in this world is finite. We can't just sit on our hands and wait for a thumbs up to pop up in the mailbox. There is more that we can do. In short, getting an official diagnosis can open many doors for you. However, it is also an investment you have to be willing to make. Now then, since we've gone over that, it's time to get to the part that I'm willing to bet everyone clicked on this video for. Assuming you didn't just skip to this part, it's time for the ups and downs of a self-diagnosis. Naturally, since you are not going through multiple sessions or having to be on a long wait list, doing a self-diagnosis can save you a lot of time and money. Plus, it's not that we don't have the information available to us already. With everything there is on the internet and how social media has grown in recent years, we have everything that we need for a self-diagnosis, right? Well, it is true that there is a lot of information that you can find on the internet, but let me ask you this. Is the information you are looking at accurate? You see, anyone can post anything on the internet. Case in point. As a result, some of the information that you can find could be false. So it's not like you could just look at one single article on the internet and go, Hmm, everything that's in this article must be the truth. It's a little bit more involved than that. If you are going down the route of a self-diagnosis, your research must be extensive. You need to be looking at multiple resources to make sure the information you are getting is consistent and not that there's a red herring in the group. You also have to make sure that the sources in question have some sort of credibility to them and not just some random person posting whatever. But most of all, you need to understand what autism is at its fullest and not just water it down to a basic level to the point where it could be mistaken for another disability. Moving on to the next up, just because you tried to diagnose without going through the official process doesn't automatically make the diagnosis wrong. If your research is extensive enough, and if you are being 100% honest with yourself, odds are you may end up hitting the bullseye. Before I received my official diagnosis, my mom was actually able to figure out that I'm autistic long before the medical experts said so. We still had to get the official diagnosis anyway because we needed the resources. Again, this does hinge on whether or not you are completely honest with yourself. Whether we want to admit it or not, we have some level of bias about ourselves, in one way or another. This bias can consequently skew our judgment, leading us in the wrong direction. Which is one of the benefits of speaking to a medical expert who has been trained in this field as they look at things from an objective point of view and could spot parts of you that you may not have known existed or even 
might not want to admit. Finally, as Stephen mentioned earlier, getting the official diagnosis means you get access to services. Without it, you're going to be fighting an uphill battle to get external assistance. This is a service provided by the government, but it's not for everyone, only for those that qualify. So if you want those services, the people in charge are going to need more than just your word. However, let's take a moment to think about something that some of you might not have considered, myself included. What if what it is you are looking for isn't services? Maybe what it is you are seeking is to feel more confident about yourself by understanding yourself better. Or maybe it's about finding the right connections or the right community to go to for advice, friendship, and emotional support. That's ultimately what it all boils down to. What is it exactly that you are hoping to gain from this experience? Are you looking for just answers to your questions or are you looking for answers and services? Are you looking for solutions that you can do by yourself or are you looking for more external assistance? Before you do anything, regardless of if you want to do a self-diagnosis or official diagnosis, you need to figure out what your goal is and what you are expecting from this experience. Once you figure that out, the choice should be made clear. Again, it is not my place to tell you what to do only to give advice and information. In the words of Olmec from Legends of the Hidden Temple, the choices are yours, and yours alone. There you have it, the ups and downs of an official diagnosis and a self-diagnosis. I have to admit, this has been a very interesting topic to look into, and I hope this video helps you out, but of course, if you have any more questions about this or want to share your input and experience in the matter, tell us about it in the comments section below. With that, it's time to end the video. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell icon, all that good stuff that makes Toast Mac grow. And don't forget, we also stream on the weekends too. So if I'm live and if you've got the time, come hang with us. Until the next video or live stream, See you later.